Receive greetings. It is always wonderful to get connected together with you as uh, I share the word of God. Uh, this particular hour, I like to talk about praying uh, because prayers is the most important part of a Christian life. Uh, I know there are some people who say they believe in prayers. And uh, from the scriptures we're going to understand it's not just about believing in prayers, but uh, believing in God who is able to answer our prayers. Taking God at his word when we're praying. You see, prayer is a critical part of our relationship with God. We cannot say we have a good relationship with God if we don't pray. Because when we pray, what we simply declare is that we are unable without God. What we say is that we depend on God in all the issues and in all the life that God has given to us. There are many people who pray, but uh, as you're going to see, there are some people who pray, but in a wrong way. They pray in a wrong way. So we, it means we can be praying, but then praying in a wrong way, praying amiss. But God desires us to be able to learn this skill of prayer. Because praying, biblically, is a learned spiritual skill that God desires all of us to have. Well, I'd like us to read Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, and see what Jesus says. He says, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. I repeat, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as to the heathen, for they think that they will be heard for their many prayers. We see here, this is an example of praying in a wrong way. Praying with repetitions thinking that uh, God is going to answer simply because you've repeated it so much. You see, if there's anything that God shows us, He wants us to be able to trust in Him, be able to believe in Him, be able to know how we are praying. Is it according to the Scriptures? Is it according to the Word of God? And that is why at a later stage, uh, also today as we're starting, we are going to see some of the prayers that Paul wrote, uh, because when we read them, when we learn from them, it is so easy for us to be able to know how best we can pray for ourselves, how best we can pray for our churches, how best we can pray for our job for those who are working, and how best we can pray in the conditions that God has placed us. You see, there are some things in our lives that we have never prayed for. In our churches, we've never prayed for. In our places of work, we've never prayed for. Then, as we will be reading and learning from the prayers that Paul made and also the prayers that Jesus made, we are going to understand that uh, God intends us, God intends to open our minds, intends to open our thoughts on our prayer lives. When we see the prayers that Jesus made and uh, the prayers that Paul made and all the prayers that are written from the scriptures, they are not there just to be read like a formula or to be prayed like a formula, but rather God wants us to learn from them so that after we have learned from them, we can apply them well in our prayers. We all have different concerns. And God intends that we shall use, we shall use the scriptures, we shall use the examples to be able to pray in an effective way. And I'm very sure that after we've made the prayers, after we've done, uh, we've read and learned from them, then we're going to have a very good uh, testimony in our lives. 
God desires us to have a testimony. I desire that all of us should have a testimony. But then a good testimony will come when we pray in the right way, when we pray what God desires us or how God desires us to pray. Uh, I'd like us to read in the book of Romans chapter 15, verse 5 and 6. What does Paul say? Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father for our Lord Jesus Christ. I like to repeat. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may be with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. One thing that we're going to realize is that um, God desires us to be able to carry the burdens for one another. The reason as to why we go to God in prayers is because there's a burden in our hearts. It is because most of the times there's a need in our heart. And sometimes it's because we are feeling we need to ask God to intervene in a particular situation. And as we will be able to, we will continue doing this, I will want us to be able to not only pray something that we are not sure of, but be able to pray while trusting that God is able to meet the need that we are praying for. And here we see, Paul says, May the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded. One thing that we realize is that Paul is asking the church, the Roman church, that as they pray that God will grant them harmony with one another. I don't think there's any person, uh, no matter the family you come from or the place you come from, you don't want to live in harmony. And that is why Paul understands that so much, that in the church of Romans, he desired that God will be able to grant them harmony. And this, what it means, is that every other time we can be able to pray that the Lord will grant us harmony in our churches, that the Lord will grant us harmony in our place of work, that the Lord will grant us harmony in our families. Because most of the times we realize that in our families, people become so much disintegrated. But God desires that we will be able to live with harmony. And the second point that Paul is pointing here is that the church will be able to glorify God with one voice. You see, when we're walking in harmony, it is so easy for us to speak with one voice. And sometimes we see this from churches where we come from. Everybody has got his own mind, different voices, people speaking different things. It means that all of us are coming or are having a different mindset. But God desires us that as a church, as a family, as a, uh, a place of work, we will be able to speak with one voice. Speaking with one voice will come because we have trusted God. We have prayed to Him and asked Him to be able to grant us one voice. And that's why this particular evening, it is my prayer that we shall be making prayers that God will grant us harmony in our families. God will grant us harmony in our places of work. God will grant us harmony in our churches and in every respective place where we come from. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I'd like to thank you this particular hour because uh, we are understanding that uh, you desire us to pray. You desire us to pray because prayer is the most critical part of our Christian life. How I pray that as we shall be continuing to study your word, you shall help us, O oh God, to be able to learn from the scriptures, to learn from the prayers, from the Bible. And after learning this, help us, O oh God Almighty, to sharpen the skill of praying in a biblical way. How I pray that in Jesus' holy name, that you shall grant us testimonies you shall grant us, O God Almighty, testimonies of what you've done in our lives. We not only want to, uh, we, we just don't want to say that we believe in prayers. 
But we want to say that we believe in a God who answers our prayers because we've prayed according to the scriptures. I'm asking that in Jesus' holy name that you shall grant us harmony in uh, our families. Lord Almighty, I pray in Jesus' holy name that we shall not live in division. I'm asking in Jesus' name that you grant us that opportunity, Lord, as a family to walk in harmony, to live in harmony. I'm also praying this particular time that Jesus Christ, you shall grant us to be able to speak in one voice as a family. As a church, you grant us to be able to speak with one voice uh, because harmony that we are asking comes from you, Jesus. The places of work where we're working, we know there has been strife, there's been division, and every other person has always wanted to show off themselves how I pray that this particular hour that you're humbling our hearts and you're humbling us oh God and making us oh God to trust in you to trust in your leading in our lives I pray that in Jesus holy name even as we shall be continuing with this lesson the king of glory you will help us to learn from you I'm asking for prayers oh God Almighty because of my brother and my sister who is sick, my brother and my sister who has no peace and joy in their hearts, I'm asking in Jesus' holy name, may you grant them peace, may you grant them harmony, may you grant them, O God Almighty, whatever they desire that is according to your will. I'm asking in Jesus' holy name, whoever is sick, you're healing them. Whoever, Lord Almighty, desires provision for me, you are going to grant them. I'm asking for protection in Jesus' mighty name. King of kings and king of glory, how I pray that our families are going to be changed. I pray that our churches are going to be changed. I pray for our places of work, they are going to be changed. I'm asking in Jesus' holy name that you're changing our hearts and you're changing our places of work. You're changing our businesses because of the because of your holy name. King of glory, thank you because you're humbling our hearts. Thank you, Lord Almighty. We bless your holy name. Any other person that feels doesn't need prayers in their hearts, I'm asking in Jesus' name, as we shall be studying your word, you will grant us the desire to be able to look into you and to pray into you. We honor your name and we glorify your name. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, my brother and my sister. You can be able to comment, like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. May the Lord richly bless you.